Hi, my name is John Perry with IPC, here with the technical question of the week for IPC. This week's question is, how do I evaluate the acceptable level of cleanliness in a printed circuit board? Uh, we all know that residues on a printed circuit board are bad. They increase the risk of premature failure or even improper function of the printed circuit board. But how much is considered bad for residues on the board? And we've never really been able to clearly answer that. A few years ago, IPC released a document known as IPC 5702. This was not a requirements document, but what it did was it was a good place to start with to determine what level of testing might be necessary to evaluate printed board cleanliness. And what it did was it discussed a number of the factors involved in determining how much testing is required. Some of those are the end use environment. Is it automotive under the hood? Will the printed circuit board be in a marine underwater application or even space? Service life. Is the printed board expected to operate for three years or 30 years? And this leads into the third category, consequence of failure, which often is tied to the IPC performance class, one, two, or three. What's the consequence of failure? Is it failure of a printed board in a cell phone that's more of a nuisance, or failure of a printed board in a pacemaker, which is a, a life-threatening situation? Now IPC has released a new document, IPC 5704. 5704 is based on a brand new test method that was developed in conjunction with 5704, test method 2.3.2082, bare board cleanliness by Eon Chromatography, or just IC for short. <clears throat> Whereas the ROSE test measured uh, micrograms of sodium chloride, what the IC test is micrograms per unit area of ions, or ionic species. This is considered a much more uh, clearer way of identifying residues on a, on a printed circuit board. What this test method does is provide a procedure for uh, compiling an extract solution. That extract solution is something that the printed circuit board has been uh, exposed to and therefore you're able to evaluate the amount of residues. Based on the extract solution that's identified by this test method, the 5704 provides requirements for the maximum ionic contamination on a printed board. And it breaks down that maximum level between circuit boards that have OSP as a surface finish or boards that do not have OSP as a surface finish, such as immersion silver, immersion tin, ENIG, or others. It further breaks down by providing maximum contamination requirements for various uh, multiple ions, such as chloride, bromine, and sodium and potassium. Lastly, it takes any of the excess extract solution that's not used in the IC test and it uses it for setting process control parameters using our good old friend, the ROSE test method. The second thing that 5702 discusses is an extensive history of what's known as the ROSE test, otherwise known as resistivity of solvent extract. The test method number in the, in the TM650 is 2.3.25. The data that this ROSE test generates is measured in what's called micrograms per unit area of sodium chloride. This test was created years ago more for process control parameters. It was not intended for uh, establishing pass-fail criteria. But what we have found out over the years within the industry is those numbers generated by the ROSE test have been incorporated into IPC performance specs. One good example is the IPC 6012. This provides a requirement for 1.56 micrograms per square centimeter of sodium chloride. In reality, this is really a poor indicator of evaluating how much residues is on a printed circuit board. Between these two documents, IPC 5702 and IPC 5704, users now have a means of evaluating the cleanliness or amount of residues on a printed circuit board. For additional questions on printed board cleanliness, please send an email to answers at ipc.org and one of the members of our technical staff will be happy to answer them. Thank you.